Hey, 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 what is up everyone? It is your boy Speed here, and today we're gonna be liking the video and subscribing to the channel as well as buying a Game Leap sub, because that's the only thing I get pleasure out of anymore in this world. It's actually quite depressing. Guys, I'm not kidding. I wake up, this is my morning routine. I wake up, I make a bowl of oatmeal, bananas of course, then I go on GameLeap.com and I buy a sub. It's the only way I feel anything. It really is. And now let's talk about the thing we're actually gonna be talking about in today's video, which is a lot of meta heroes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight heroes that I think are currently strong that you guys should be considering. A lot of these heroes actually were nerfed in the recent patch, but are still good. And the reason why I like discussing them is because I feel like a lot of people go into this bad mindset where it's like, oh, the hero got nerfed, they're unplayable, like Spectre. No, the hero is still really good in pubs, really strong, uh, and will likely carry you in your game. So let's get into it. Did you know that Game Leap is currently 50% off? If you use the discount code DOTA50 right now, you're gonna get 50% off. We don't do this all the time, and so really your best opportunity to get to the next level, to break through the current rank that you are and start to understand Dota on a higher level is right now. So you need to click the link down below, use the code DOTA50 when you go sign up, 50% off. That's crazy, that's half off. And now let's get into the video. All right, so first off on the list, we have Arc Warden. Arc Warden, I'm sure you guys have been seeing and watching a lot of the pro scene as of late, as have I. And we've been seeing Arteezy absolutely pop off on this hero. I think Arc Warden is just brutally strong right now. And that's largely to the fact that Midas was buffed and all the other items that are similar to Midas have been nerfed. What do I mean? Well, Necro 1 has been obliterated. Drums, still very, very strong, but were recently nerfed. Helm of the Dominator, not nearly as good as it was when it first came out this patch. And therefore, what do you have left remaining? Radiance, Maelstrom, which Arc Warden actually buys, and Midas. So yeah, you buy a Midas. That's the best option on Arc Warden. And you get two of them. It's literally perfect on this hero. It makes so much sense. And split pushing is a big deal this patch. Being able to split up the lanes. Why is that, right? Why is being able to split up the map and having a hero that can defend, you know, lanes very quickly or, or pushing lanes quickly a big deal? Well, that's because there's no shrines. Outposts are no longer easily taken, right? You actually have to take a tier two that are impossible to kill to do that. And so having a hero like Arc Warden who can buy bots and then on a 40 second cooldown push out any lane with no threat is a big deal. It's game changing. And so yeah, if you're looking for a mid slash carry hero to pick and stomp with, I definitely recommend Arc Warden, especially if you just want a formulaic hero. Arc Warden is just one of those heroes that, you know, the lane is, I'm not going to say it's easy. You cast a lot of spark rates, you spam your spells, you chip them down, and then you farm a lot and you show up to fights if they're safe. Next up on the list is Zeus. And yeah, I just want to put Zeus in here because this is always a hero that gets tinkered with. No, I'm not referring to Tinker. I'm actually referring to Zeus. And recently in the, in the patch, Zeus was nerfed. He was nerfed pretty hard. He lost 2 strength, which means he lost 40 health. He lost 0.25 base mana regen. And his level 10 talent was also nerfed by 0.25 mana regen. And so all in all, Zeus was heavily nerfed. The hero is just worse. The thing is, how much worse is the question. Now, if you are from 0 to 4 Cam Amar, I definitely still recommend picking this hero in any role. Not the safe lane though. Just don't pick him safe lane. That's it's probably not going to work. Your team will instantly tilt out the throws. <laughs> so don't do that. But uh, yeah, the, the hero is still solid. That, that's all I have to say. Next up on the list, we have Darkseer. Darkseer has been getting picked over and over and over and over and over again by pros. And rightfully so. The hero is dominating right now. The tempo it allows you to control is insane. Reason being is I think a lot of the position fours that are popular right now uh, work very well with Darkseer. Now, sure, you could say, what about Phoenix? That's... You know, that's not too good with Darkseer. Well, it's okay in teamfights, actually. Uh, you know, Rubik, eh, you know, it's all right with Darkseer. It's actually not a bad lane, to be honest. But all in all, heroes like Clockwork that I think are good right now. Clockwork, I think Spirit Breaker, Darkseer is fantastic. Tree and Darkseer is very good. You have a lot of these combos that I think are very strong with this hero. And Vacuum is very strong right now. It allows you to actually secure range creeps for wants. And most importantly, it does a ton of damage, which allows you to solo kill people, keep the Iron Shells on top of them, and do a ton of damage and really Darkseer is just super good at controlling the pace of the game which seems to be relatively fast in the pro scene. I really do believe that in pubs it's not too fast. It's really hard for people and pub players to actually kill tier 2 towers right now you know with the lack of coordination and the fact that it requires you to actually control an area rather than walk up to a tower it makes it very hard so pubs are generally slower than pro games right now and therefore Darkseer is super popular in the pro scene 
but I still think if you're good enough at the hero and you practice him enough, he'll dominate pubs as well. Next up on the list is one that, yes, this one surprised me as well. Uh, this is Omni Knight. Now, recently he did just get a buff in this patch, yeah, so the hero is better now. And what it is, is he got five movement speed. And you might be saying, speed, really? Is that it? Is that enough to make hero better? Well, yes, actually, this hero really, really needs movement speed. Now, five, is five really enough to justify the fact that he has gone up by a full percent in win rate? No, that's more likely than anything. Coincidence and a little bit of a buff, right? I've talked about this in multiple patch videos. Movement speed's a big deal. It's why I always incentivize players on, you know, when they're playing anyone, such as Leshrac or any hero that needs to get in melee range to do stuff, or, or is a support player to buy wind laces, buy casual wind laces, buy tranquil boots, buy these movement speed items. It's really important to be able to just be fast and be in position. And so for Omni Knight, being in position is everything. It, it allows you to get your right clicks in, it allows you to get into position to deal damage with purification, to save people with purification, to save people with heavenly grace, to save people with your, your ultimate, to just get on top of them with Dejan Aura. You know, every single one of your spells requires you to be very, very close. And that's why when the hero fell off, it was because they nerfed his cast ranges, and movement speed sort of offsets that, if that makes any sense. And yeah, I just think the hero's pretty solid in pubs. It always has been. Omni Knight for the longest of time was like the pub hero, uh, when purification was a little bit better, and his repel made people spell immune. I think Omni Knight has like a... You guys remember those days? That was like when he had a 60% win rate or something like that. Pretty nuts. But right now he's at a 52.64%. And is definitely a good pub hero. Also, I think pros will start picking him a little bit. I feel like the hero is a bit undervalued. Next up on the list is Clockwork. And I don't want to harp too much on Clockwork because I feel like I've talked quite a bit about this hero. I also made a video talking about Clockwork in full. So yeah, if you're really looking for an in-depth guide on Clockwork, definitely go watch that video. It, it has GH in the title. Now, let's just quickly mention why. I mean, the hero did actually recently get nerfed and pretty hard. Uh, just on Dota buff alone, the hero actually dropped win rate quite a lot. It went from a 52.6% win rate, which is obviously one of the highest in the game, to a 51.41. And obviously 51.41 is not enough for me to say, oh, this hero is trash. This hero is completely unpickable. Obviously, that is not uh, the case. That is not the case at all. Now, the hero, what were the changes? Well, he lost five movement speed. Obviously, that hurts a hero that requires to get in range for a lot of his spells, especially in the lane when you have no hook shot. You know, you need the movement speed, even to get in range for a hookshot. Movement speed's a, a big deal. Rocket Flare, you lost two seconds of vision, which matters a lot if you want to scout out something like Roshan and snipe it. Those two seconds can be the difference between you actually being able to time it right or not, and that can change an entire outcome of a game. And just scouting areas in general. That's always impactful in Clockwork. And so yeah, it's just a nerf. All in all though, the hero is still in a very good spot. Clockwork is, is just a reliable position for right now that allows any team to initiate and pick heroes like Drow, which are also good right now. And speaking of Drow, I feel like Drow is, is good. I really do believe that Drow is something that's going to continue to get picked. In the recent patch, he went untouched. I also made a video on Drow. I don't actually know if it came out yet. I'm pretty sure it didn't. But I made a video on Drow that will likely come up on YouTube at some point or another. And Drow is fantastic right now. The amount of damage she gives to her teammates is insane. Her laning is insane. The bonus damage from arrows is insane. All in all, this hero is nutty. It is nutty how much damage it does. Now the question is, can you protect it? That is really all Drow is in my opinion right now. Can you protect it in the lane? Can you protect it in the mid game? Can you protect it late game? Can you keep it alive? Can you prevent people from canceling out her ultimate? What does that mean? Well, you should go watch the video. You can basically cancel Drow's ulti if you're within 400 units of her. That's just how it works. But yeah, pick Drow if your team can protect you and the enemy team can jump you. You'll deal a lot of damage. Next up, we have Clinks, and Clinks is just still really good in pubs. Also, I saw our TZ picket, so EG's picking it. You know, that means pro teams are picking it, which means it can't be that bad, right? <laughs> no, but it's definitely not that bad. Like, Clinks is, is pretty good right now. His current win rate, unlike uh, Venomancer, is 55%. Venomancer, by the way, rest in peace, guys. The hero is down 3%. 3%, holy. However, Jungle Veno is still good. Believe it or not. I'm not just saying this. It's not even a joke. Veno jungle is still not that bad. They nerfed his leaning pretty hard, but his jungling, you guys know what it is. It's still pretty dang solid. So head into the jungle and you won't drop in win rate. Now, let's go back to Clanks. The hero is at a 55% win rate. 
I'm basically required to put the hero on that on the list for this reason, but he's also just a really good pub hero. The fact that you go in this is great, you soul kill supports easily, you force people to buy sentries and drown their net worth, and most importantly, you just deal a lot of damage and become tanky without buying a lot of tanky items, which is good for pub players, because people just seem to buy like Deso, Axe, Daedalus, MKB, into Hex. Like, where's the BKB, bruh? But nonetheless, Clinks is good. Then, finally, last, but certainly not least, we have Spectre. And I'd like to say as an honorable mention before I talk about Spectre, is Underlord. The hero's win rate is still really high, even after his E was completely nerfed. I have a feeling that the reason why the hero has actually somehow gone up in win rate after I thought he got nerfed, pretty sure he got nerfed, like, the hero went up. It's confusing. But the reason why I think this is, is because the hero was likely not doing well, even even though I think this is its biggest strength, it was likely not doing well in, in low to average MMR pubs because of its ability to dominate in CS. Frankly, players are just still really, really bad at this. I mean, that's just how it is, right? It, it takes so much practice and time to actually learn how to dominate on CS. It's so much focus, so much understanding of creep aggro. Uh, it really is difficult. But, you know, that, that's what got nerfed. It got chopped in half. At level 1, he gets half of the damage from his E per creep, which is terrible. Like, that's horrible. But I think what, what I was missing is that how people went on Underlord is just by buying tanky items and pushing out waves and then getting gone on. And when they get gone on, they don't die. The enemy team overcommits and then so on and so on. They win the fight because they have a bunch of auras and the enemy team tries to kill the most tanky hero on the... Um, you know, the, the opponent's team, and yeah, I think that's why. So, Underlord, it's a really straightforward hero that does really straightforward things and wins quite often. But we have Spectre. Just don't put Spectre out of the question. That's all I'm gonna say. Thanks for watching, folks. The hero's still good. It still haunts in and tanks a bunch of damage and farms fine and does well in lane and so on and so on. So thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed, let me know. Comment down below. What is your current favorite hero of the patch? I want to hear what you guys have to say. Maybe, just maybe your favorite hero of the patch is Odie. Odie's been doing better, even though it's like my least favorite hero in Dota. Hey, it's been doing better. Leshrac, that hero's great. I made a video about it yesterday. Leshrac's good. So let me know what you guys think is the best hero in the patch. Maybe it's Juggernaut. I don't know. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one, and peace. Before you leave, just want to say a quick message. If you're trying to get better at Dota or you just enjoyed that video, uh, I know this is pretty general and you're going to hear this quite a bit from me, but I recommend you sign up to GameLink.com. Why? Because I put a lot of effort into the content over there and generally the effort I do there is different from the content you're going to see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster. Because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. And that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end, because a lot of people just watch five minutes, they skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below. Do not forget 50% off on the Game League website right now if you want to become broken, absolutely broken. Go sign up right now. So I'll see you guys there and peace.